We're on to 7a in our intro to analysis by Rosenlicht and, and chapter 1. And in this problem, again, we're showing a set of quality here, but this time we are showing a set of quality with this new function notation. And I kind of drew a picture over here just to give us a sense of what this whole situation at 7, the preliminary for 7 is describing, the preliminary um, information for 7 is describing. And um, it is just a function f that maps elements in x to elements in y. And there's two subsets of x, a and b, and two subsets of y, c and d. And um, we're asked to prove these these statements here, these or these set of qualities and also set subsets um, and containments here. So for a, we're showing that f, e, f, the image of a union b under f is equal to the image of a under f union the image of b under f. And to do that, we're going to do the same thing that we've done before. We're going to show that the left-hand side set is a subset of the right-hand side set, and the right-hand side set is a subset of the left-hand side set. So to do that, remember, like usual, we're going to say, okay, well, let, let y, this time I'm going to choose y, since we're mapping an x element, since usually we say f of x for the argument of f, and then that is equal to some y. And they, that's a common convention here. And, so, and since we're mapping a union b to y, I'm just going to use y instead of x, since y is in our image of f. So, so let a let y be an f of a union b. Then, if we can show that any that this y must also be an f of a union f of b, where a and b are sets, then I've shown that every y that has this property, and therefore every a every y in the left hand side set must also be in the set on the right hand side. So let's do that. So let let y be in the image of a union b of um, the image of a union b under f, and if y is in the image of a union b under f, then remember this: these definitions over here. These are crucial for this problem. These are very crucial. In, in fact, most of the problem hinges on these definitions here. So the image of a under f is for any set a, where a is a subset of x and x is the domain of f. For any, or let's. I would say f the image of a under f is all f of x where x is an a. Or another way to say that is all y such that there exists an a, an x and a rather, that all y such that there exists an x and a such that f of x is equal to y. So let's move on with this. Let using this this definition here, so if y is an the a the image of a union b under f then that implies that y or that that implies that there exists an x in a union b such that f of x is equal to y and going off of that by the definition of set union that means that x is an a or x is in b which implies that if x is an a, that implies that f of x is equal to y, which is in f of a, the image of a under f. And this is true because y, y is in the image of a under f because we've just shown here that there exists an x and a if x is an a. So if x is an a, then that means there exists an x and a such that f of x is equal to y, and since x is in a, then that means y is in f of a. And same thing for b. If x is in b, then that implies that f of x is equal to y, which is in f of b. And again, the reason why f, y is in f of b is because there exists an x in b such that f of x is equal to y. Therefore, since x is in b, then that means y must be in f of b, since f of x is equal to y. And again, there exists an x in b, such that f of x is equal to y. So, since either of these two cases can hold, we have that either f of, f of x, which is equal to y, is in f of a or f of x which is equal to y is in f of b 
And that's the same as saying that y is in f of a or y is in f of b. And you can see where I'm going with this, which implies by the definition of set union, y is in f of a union f of b. And again, to emphasize what we were doing up here, so we, we, we showed that there, there exists an x and a such that f of x is equal to y. And therefore, by this definition up here, there, since there exists an x and a such that f of x is equal to y, that means that since that x is an a, then that means y is in f of a. And similarly for b. So we hinged off of this, we relied on off of this definition up here of the image of a under f. And so we've, we've just shown it. We've just shown that any y with this property must also be in f of a union b, and therefore all y in this set. And therefore this set is a sub, all y in this set ha, must be in the right-hand side set, and therefore this left-hand side set is a subset of the right-hand side set. And so let's go the other direction here. Let me change colors. Let's go the other direction where we're going to show that f of a union f of b must be a subset of f of a union b. So let y be an f of a union f of b. And that implies by the definition of set, uh, definition of set union that y is an f of a or y is an f of b. And if y is an f of a, if y is an f of a, so let's let's go case by case here. So y is an f of a or y is an f of b. So in the first case, if y is in f of a, let's see what that, that means here. Well, if y is an f of a, then that implies that there exists an x in a such that f of x is equal to y. And if x is in a, remember, a is a subset of a union any other set x for any set x, for any set x. So if x is in a, then that must mean that there exists an x in a union b. Remember, we could do any other set here. So a union b, that's just any other set. A is a subset of, A is contained in this set right here. And, that's, and you can see what that is, but it, I will leave it to you to prove that more rigorously. But there exists an X in A union B such that F of X is equal to Y. And that implies, this implies that Y is in F of A union B. And again, we're using this definition up here. Since there exists an X in A union B, since there exists an X in A union B such that F of X is equal to Y, then that means that Y must be in F of A union B. Again, relying on this definition up here. So, in the first case, Y is in F of A union B, and we're going to use a similar argument for the second case. If Y is in F of B, then that implies that there exists an X in A such that F of X is equal to y. And then kind of using our trick here, if, oh, excuse me, not f of a, not f of a, f, uh, not x, f of a, x is in b here. Let me use that small pen. x is in b, since y is in f of b, that means there, there exists an x in b such that f of x is equal to y. Which implies, again, using a trick that we used up here, where if a, a is a subset of A union X, so that means, of course, we can say the same thing for B. B is a subset of B union X for any set X. So, that means that there exists an X in B, since B is a subset of B union X for any subset X, that means that X must also be in B union A, since we could choose any subset X, any set X, for this right part of the union, so we can choose A. So X is in B union A, such that there exists an X in B union A, such that F of X is equal to Y. And that implies, again, hinging on the definition that we talked about above, Y is in F of A union B. And again, B union A is the same as A union B. Um, and 
we've shown it. We've shown that in both cases, whether y is an f of a or y is an f of b, then y must be an f of a union b. So we, we've, we've shown that no matter what, for, for, for any case that whether y is an f of a or y is an f of b, and therefore if y is an f of a union f of b, then y must be an f of a union b. And we've shown the other direction. We've shown that f of a union f of b must be a subset of f of a union b. And we're done with both, both sides of the proof, and we've shown the equality.